Okay, this video is for students wishing to uh, make up notes that we took over ecosystems earlier this trimester. Um, you'd want to make sure you have your notes page handy and available so that you can uh, record those notes. And then once you're done with those, um, you can uh, show them. You want to show them to myself, uh, Teresa, or Heather, depending on which class you're in, to make up the points for those. Um, if you do not have the notes page uh, that goes with this video, it's uh, on the website. Uh, down below under this video, uh, and it's labeled uh, attach under attachments. Um, okay, the first thing we did as a class, uh, as we talked about ecosystems, uh, was do what we did a little brainstorm. Uh, we talked about, you know, what is an ecosystem? What do you think of when you talk about ecosystems? And what does that word, what does that word mean? And uh, one of the things that uh, the class did was break down the word uh, into the two parts there, eco and system. Uh, and they said that eco uh, really means environment. Uh, and they broke down the other part of the word system. And system uh, was uh, oops. system was a way to uh, organize a uh, organize a Organizing either uh, a, a large a large object or a large something, uh, or also a way to organize uh, a process. Um, so something a larger whole day is a way to organize it. Okay, so we put together uh, an ecosystem. If you think about it as a, as a way of organizing the environment. Okay, uh, students also talked about the idea that. Uh, environment included, our ecosystems included um, uh, living organisms. Um, that was the theme that a lot of classes came up with, and they also thought that it included um, the, um, some of them called it the non living. Uh, Parts of, of the ecosystem, and they also called it um, the surrounding environment. So, um, you know, they talked about it including all forms of life. They talked about, students came up with the idea of what non living would mean, you know, such as uh, that it would include the weather in that region or the climate um, and that it would also include uh, the you know the rock or the land uh, and in any of those would be some of the non-living things non-living components so so we had a good brainstorm around that you uh, on your notes page there uh, should have a, a system similar to this. so you would want to put some of these things around as well as possibly add uh, some of your ideas about what the word ecosystem means. So take some time now uh, to do that. Okay, and then we uh, watched this uh, video um, about ecosystems. You won't be able to do that through this uh, through this video, but you could do that uh, if you ask me. We could do that at school. Um, but we talked about then the word ecosystem and, the, and looked at the definition. An ecosystem is all the organisms uh, living in an area together with their physical environment. Um, so that sounds a lot like uh, the ideas they had, the students had in the brainstorm as far as the living organisms and then the, you know, they're in the area together with their physical environment, the rocks, the ground, the weather, the trees, all that stuff that, that's all made up of an, e uh, makes up an ecosystem. And that, that definition was taken from the uh, Holtz Environmental Science textbook. Uh, next, we talked a little bit about that idea of living and non-living things. Um, you see down here, all of these things have something in common. Maybe you can tell what it is. Um, they're all living things. Uh, in environmental science uh, and ecosystems, we call those uh, biotic factors. So ecosystems are made up of biotic factors uh, with the living and previously living parts in ecosystem. Uh, and then the other component of ecosystems would be uh, non-living things, which would be all the things up here. The weather, rocks, crystals, uh, sun, 
all those things that are not living but are essential parts of the ecosystem. So abiotic factors, the non-living parts of an ecosystem. To help you remember these two words, you can think of bio uh, for biotic, meaning life, like biology. Um, and then if you can remember that one, then you could probably remember then that abiotic means the non-living parts of an ecosystem. So two good vocab words there. Again, make sure you get these, these pieces of notes into your note sheet. Um, this next up, this is just showing you the uh, uh, the definitions of these words that we just went over: biotic factors, living and once living parts of an ecosystem, including all the plants and animals uh, on the planet or in that ecosystem. And abiotic factors are the non-living parts of the ecosystem. They would include air, water, rocks, sand, light, and temperature, just as in a few examples. Um, and figure three over here shows several biotic and abiotic factors in an Alaskan ecosystem. So you have uh, the mountains in the background, the snow on top, the weather apparent here. Um, you have the water here, but then you also have all the living things as part of this ecosystem as well. The grass, the shrubs, and bushes, trees, and of course our friend here, uh, the caribou. So uh, just giving you examples of those biotic and abiotic factors making up an ecosystem. Uh, okay, next up we're going to talk a little bit about how ecosystems uh, and uh, living uh, living things on the planet are organized. Um, just like you and me, the wildebeest here is a single person, as a single uh, organism. It's classified as an organism. There's one of him. Um, when you have a population, or when you have a group of them together as of, a, of the same species, uh, we call it a population. For example, in class, you have a population of human students uh, in your class when you have more than one, one, more than one human. Um, how do we distinguish uh, of the same species? Well, a species uh, is defined by its ability to reproduce. So if two organisms are able to reproduce with each other and produce a viable offspring, then they must be uh, members of the same species. Uh, an interesting example of this and something that's not a species would be um, for example, the uh, the donkey and the horse. Uh, donkeys and horses can mate with each other, uh, and they actually produce an offspring that is the mule. But the mule is unfertile, uh, and cannot, two mules can't mate and produce another mule. Uh, so that's an example of how the, the horse as a species and the donkey as a species are. They are two distinct species because they cannot produce offspring that carry on um, for more than one generation. The mule, um, once it dies, then uh, it can no longer reproduce. Um, another example, as far as thinking about the difference between a, popula a species and uh, uh, and uh, something else, would be in dogs, for example. Um, it's hard to think of a Chihuahua and uh, a Great Dane um, mating and reproducing, but they can. In fact, um, they're members of the same species, the dog. They're different breeds of dogs, and man has contributed to the big differences between those breeds and dogs, but dogs are all relatives and they're all the same species, so they would fit in a population. Um, then when we go up one more level, we take the wildebeest from this population and we uh, incorporate them with other populations of different species together living in an area, and that's called a community. So there's a community of organisms here of a variety of species. Uh, and a lot of times, here's where kids get confused when we talk about communities and ecosystems and how they're different. Communities are made up of are just the living things here, uh, the a variety of living things living in a certain area. Um, that's called a community. And then when you take that community and put it into an ecosystem, remember that an ecosystem includes the biotic and the abiotic factors. So this ecosystem, in addition to having that community in it, also includes all the the non-living parts: uh, the water, the rocks, the air, all the the temperature, the weather, the climate, all of those non-living factors that um, make this ecosystem function. And then the next step up from that would be a biosphere. So on the bi in the biosphere, such as the Earth, we find a wide variety of different ecosystems uh, throughout the planet. OK, so we talked about the levels of organization. Now this is just a quick, uh, quick test for the kids. We did this in class. It was pretty interactive here. I'm just going to help you out. Uh, we wanted to put these words down here in either the abiotic category or the biotic category. Um, remember, biotic means living, and abiotic is non-living. So trees are uh, living things. They're members of the plant uh, family. Uh, algae, also a uh, living thing. Humans, I think we're pretty comfortable with that one, living things. 
Uh, water uh, would be an example of a non-living thing, an abiotic thing, uh, not living. Uh, clouds, clouds are water uh, in the in the atmosphere, so they are also abiotic. Gold is an element um, and not a living thing. Uh, nitrogen is uh, also an element found in the in the atmosphere and in plants and an essential resource. Um, rock would be a, another example of uh, of a non uh, non living abiotic um, factor. Minerals uh, minerals actually make up rocks. Rocks are nothing more than a whole bunch of minerals glued together, and minerals are abiotic non living things. Now we get down to these three things that the kids struggled with in class, and all three of the things have something in common. They were once living, uh, but are no longer living. Um, in this case, dinosaurs, this di the dinosaur bones, the dinosaurs have died, and their bones are left behind. Well, even though that's true, their material, the bones that are left behind, and anything else that would be left behind that we would find of a living organism is considered a biotic factor because it was once at one time living, and it's living, it was living tissue that we can now look at. Um, same thing then with dead leaves. Uh, if it was once living, it's considered biotic. So dead leaves uh, and, uh, and also a banana uh, would go over here on the biotic side. So you should end up actually with the six things on the abiotic side and six things on the biotic side. Living or once living and non-living, biotic, abiotic. Okay, next up here we just have a little vocab check. Um, again, we did this in class. Students um, went through these words together and moved these into the right positions. All the organisms living in an area together with their physical environment. That sounds a lot like an ecosystem to me. We'll put it there. Um, so just move it over there like so. A group of organisms that can mate to produce a fertile off to produce fertile offspring. Um, that would be a species. As I talked about the, what the definition of species is, they have to be able to reproduce. Fertile offspring. Non-living parts of an ecosystem, those are going to be the abiotic factors. The place an organism lives, that was a word we hadn't talked about quite a bit, but that is called a habitat, a habitat for that organism, where it lives in the ecosystem. A group of various species that live in the same place and interact with each other. Um, various species uh, is the key words there, that tells me this is a community. Okay, community is a group of organisms of different species living together. All the members of the same species that live in the same place at the same time be an example of a population. Living or once living parts of an ecosystem would be abiotic factors, and that leaves us with organisms which, uh, which are an individual living thing, an organism. I want to point out as you are working to get these things into your notes that these are not necessarily in the correct order as you have them on your sheet. You would want to make sure that you put the right word with the right sentence um, as the computer changes them every time I open this document, so changes the order. We can quick check those, make sure that uh, you, your teacher was accurate and look like you did the job. Okay, uh, that's it for your ecosystem notes. Again, you want to make sure you turn those in um, to either myself, uh, Heather, if you're in Heather and I's first period class, or Teresa, if you're in Teresa and I's second hour class. Thank you.